So <clears throat> it's gonna be a quick uh, life experience slash uh, Ukraine war slash history uh, video. Uh, I just wanted to get something up on the channel um, and anything else I can think of. Uh, so, you know, if you ever, you know, I've talked already, you know, if your wife moves out on you and uh, takes everything, um, you're going to have to replace it. And, uh, you know, one of the things uh, here in Florida is, you know, of course, because of my uh, medical situation, I have to sanitize everything in the house. And I've been slowly doing that, going through cabinets and everything. And uh, it's a work in progress. Uh, but anyway, um, let's just get into the, the latest two things. Uh, the first one was... Um, she took uh, the coffee maker, <laughs> of course. What the crazy thing is, I guess now she can't drink like regular coffee. So I had bought like, I don't know, a year's supply of coffee and she left it all here. So I'm like, well, I guess I got to get a coffee maker because I like coffee. You know, I just drink the instant stuff. And But no, no. So anyway, I did a hell of a lot of research. And uh, what I came up with was this Hamilton Beach uh, thing now, you know, if you're a married couple, uh, it makes 40 ounces of, uh, of coffee. Um, you know, I don't know about you, but when I was working, I mean, mainly, you know, I just wanted a cup or two, and my wife might have a cup or two. And I'm telling you, this thing it's got the 40 ounce reservoir in the back, and then you just I guess I'm gonna have to get a cup that's gonna fit this thing. That's a 14 ounce cup right there. You can you can program it for eight ounces, and uh, you know, you put one in. One and a half teaspoons in there, and uh, or you can put, and that's a nice thing. You know, I'm I'm always into uh, anything that doesn't require replacement stuff. So there's no paper filters, no nothing. You just shovel the coffee right down into this thing, and then brew you a cup of coffee, and then you know empty the the, the used coffee grounds, uh, hopefully in your garden. They're good for uh, plants, and then um, and then you're done. And so you got a cup of coffee, and if you want to brew 14 ounces, that's enough for two cups. Uh, and then you can brew, of course, you got 40 ounces in the back. You can brew the wife, uh, the same thing. And it doesn't take that long. Um, I think, man, I tell you what, I like this better than any coffee maker I've ever seen. I'm glad the wife took the coffee maker. Um, and it wasn't that damn expensive. I think it was less than a hundred bucks. Uh, yeah, I know every damn time I turn around spending a hundred freaking dollars. The next thing was, uh, she took the air filter, um, here in Florida. I mean, when you're healthy, and uh, you're working out and you're hiking, um, you don't really care if you got some pollen in the air or maybe a little dust or any of that sort of thing or germs floating around. You know, in fact, it, it, it builds up that immune system. But no, not in my situation. I got I to gotta clean the air in here, man. I did a shitload of research uh, trying to find. And you know what? A lot of times, like that coffee maker, that's smaller the better. You know, you could I could have got the, the, what is it, 12, 14 cup coffee maker where you bruise and that's what my mom had that's what my wife had no i like this thing it's a hell of a lot simpler uh, just to clean it once a month you put a mixture of half vinegar half water and just run it through there and boom you're done um, of course clean it each time you use it but that's just simple um, so air filters i mean it's up to you uh, the one that i came up with was the lavoit core 300s and um well, I mean, they've got they they've got a number, of, and I wasn't going to get the S. The S just means smart, which means Wi-Fi. I I don't I simple simple simple. That's what I I want. You know, I don't want things on Wi-Fi. I don't want the ability to operate my my damn air filter from a, a telephone. You know, a thousand miles away. I couldn't give a shit about it. But you know, when when I was getting into it, uh, the the regular 300 was, uh, and that's almost like two years old. The model came out. Um, it was 99 bucks. Well, I found, and then of course you can get the air the uh, uh, filters for it. That's what I like about it is the filters for it are cheap, um, and then it's up to you. You could place them every six months to a year. I I'll probably just wait a year and replace it because I only use it when I go to sleep at night for the most part and. You know, maybe cut it on a couple hours before I go to bed because it's going to filter that whole room. Uh, and that's where I just want it is and mainly in the bedroom for sleep. Uh, and then, of course, I do have another filter in my office that I use in there. Um, and, of course, you know, there's various size models. And I looked at the Blue Air Pure 211 Plus. I know these things. I'm just going to run through them. And then the Winx, man, I came real close. The Winx 5500-2. 
uh, because it's got a washable pre-filter and carbon filter. And I'm, I'm telling you, that's, that's what I want. I want things where you ain't got to go out and keep buying stuff. I just want to be able to buy it and use it. Okay. And the Winx, uh, the, the, now you still got to replace the filter in it once a year, but it wasn't like just a cartridge. And that's, but anyway, I like the small footprint of the Lavoie, and it'll do, um, it'll do like 500 square feet. I mean, mainly two, and it depends on the amount of time you want to run it. Um, you can do your own investigations. That's enough on the home experiences. That's, that's where a lot of time goes is me trying to, to get everything. So let's just talk about Ukraine for two seconds. Um. Uh, well, I think it's pretty obvious now <laughs> that your, your liberal mainstream media lied to you, lied, 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 you know, and uh, yeah, there ain't going to be no damn offensive that they're going to come in and I can't remember the damn name of the, I, boy, I tell you, I can't, uh, it's, it's, it, it was, anyway, they're not going to be coming in with an offensive and uh, that's, that's a done deal, uh, unless I'm completely wrong, I mean, you never know. Uh, now, did they hit an ammo dump in the um, Crimea region? I think so. It looks like uh, from, from what I'm telling. Um, and the way they did it was pretty doggone smart. They Evidently, they got some uh, uh, probably special forces. I don't say special forces. I mean, you know, it depends on what you want to call special forces. I mean, ever watch the movie The Inglorious Bastards? <laughs> special forces, believe it or not. Watch the movie. You'll see what I'm talking about. But anyway, so they got behind enemy lines, and what they did was take in some uh, simple drones, and they took, um, from what I understand, they took bombs and they attached them to those drones, and they just flew them out over the ammo dumps, and then they just dropped them, you know, just like you would. Remember, if you remember, if, if you ever want to study history, if you go back to World War I, that was how uh, uh, air warfare was fought, that there was, uh, those big balloons, they'd come in and they'd have the bombs all hanging off the bottom of them, and then they'd get over the... The enemy lines, you know, and of course, what do they get? They, they just shoot up in the air to try to hit them, and then they drop bombs on them. And of course, then, you know, planes were developed, and you had, you know, the twin prop planes, and then they had the single prop planes, and then, of course, then we had jet planes, and we really haven't advanced that much from there. It's still basically a same technology, just a little bit better each time. Um, but uh, so that's what they did. They flew them drones in over. Now, you say, well, my God, how can the ammo <laughs> just be sitting out in the open? We're dropping a bomb from the air and might set it off. Well, I can only tell you, like Don, Dan Bongino, you know, he always talks about, oh, I was a Secret Service agent, and I can tell you how this works from the inside. Well, I can tell you how it works from the inside. When I was down at Jabber, you know, our ammo dumps, our planes, the bombs on the flight line, it was all completely insecure, especially from an air attack, Okay. Uh, you know, they, the, the uh, powers that be, you know, that Trader Millie or uh, let's say Austin, dumbest two people in the command of the military that I've ever seen, um, they'd be up there going like, ah, oh, the base is secure. We got plenty of, uh, you know, uh, special, I mean, uh, security police around. That's what they're called in the Air Force, security police and military in the Army. They're called military police. We got them out everywhere. They're, they're out patrolling. Nobody can get near that base. Well, that's true for the most part, especially in the desert. You know, unless you, I mean, you can't even dig a tunnel in the desert, think about it. So, you know, but we weren't secure from the air, and I, uh, but we had the Patriots. And so they figured that any sort of missile attack, which it did work out that way, but I'm damn close. I mean, it, anyway, anything hitting those ammo dumps, uh, that whole base would have been a crater. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, we had more bombs there than probably in the history of the world in one spot. Uh, <clears throat> so, for, for the, uh, the, the believability that a Russian base was hit in Crimea uh, just by flying some balloons over and dropping some bombs on it is very believable because they, they figured that, you know, once again, generals are stupid. So they, they figure they're secure behind uh, their own lines. And how's the enemy going to get there? Well, they didn't know that, you know, a little few special forces might have some drones. And at this day and age, I mean, and, and they could have done this. Well, I don't know. Back in 2003, did we really have drones? I... I don't think so, but I, I do say there were model planes back then. And, you know, if, if your enemy had gotten innovative, they probably could have gotten some, some something in over the base. But uh, they were in enemy territory. You think about it, Kuwait. But, of course, Crimea is the same way. All right, so let's get into the rest of the war. Uh, um, 
the uh, it looks like the Western <laughs> NATO NATO's eating crow big time right now. They can't they can't resupply the uh, uh, Ukrainians fast enough, um, and they're running. I mean, think about it. Our stockpiles are depleted. Uh, you know, we just fought in the United States. We fought. Well, we just gave 83, well, the Democrats, the Democrats gave, <laughs> what, $85 billion worth of military equipment to the Taliban in Afghanistan, so that depleted our military supplies. Then we sent another, uh, what was it, $40 billion? No, well, I don't know. I, want, I can't remember. I don't know how many billions of dollars of military equipment we sent to Ukraine. And, of course, you know, we got, you know, six, well, I don't know, 1,700 bases all around the world, and, they, of course, they... They're not very heavily armed. I bet they've been stripped down <laughs> quite a bit at this point. And you got a woke military with a bunch of people that, uh, anyway, so what we're seeing is, you know, and in the Western nations, you've got uh, Russia supply and Germany with, uh, with crude oil that um, doesn't look, I mean, they can cut them off at any time, natural gas and uh, you know, Trump, I remember when he went over and waved that white flag <laughs> and said, you're surrendering to the Russians. I guess they're surrendering now. And of course, you know, th then you got, well, look at here, California, they're actually going to keep their, their nuclear power plant. They're one. I don't know if it's just one. Uh, that's what I heard. Uh, you know, God, what happened to green energy? You know, of course, to me, nuclear power is green energy. How can you get greener than that other than the, the, the fuel waste? And, and like I've been telling you i mean we've advanced in the technology for nuclear power plants quite a bit so if we built some new ones the nuclear waste coming off of that uh, is not that extensive and in in the future i have a feeling we will come up with technological ways to dispose of that nuclear waste um what else so yeah in ukraine i uh, and you know what and this is this is why i tell you that ukraine ain't all you know, what the media wants to build it up to be. From what I understand, they're recruiting a bunch of old men and kids, just like the Germans did in World War II, and sending them to the front lines to supposedly fight. Now, that doesn't mean they're going to last very long. And, uh, you know, you have to analyze a war from your supply lines. The Russians, <laughs> they, got, they got the factories just like the... Go back and study history, okay? How did the Russians defeat the Germans? Well, they had they moved their entire factories from one city to another. I can't remember, and uh, it was amazing what they were able to account. But they kept their 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 industry intact, and uh, and so they were just churning out tank after tank after tank, bomb after bomb, artillery after artillery, and that's what they're doing now. So they have an infinite supply of, of, of shells and artillery and everything going. And by the way, only about 15% of their, course, their forces are committed to uh, Ukraine anyway. Joint, hey, check it out. They're thumbing their nose at the globalists. Uh, joint military exercises with China. Uh, India looks like, you know, they're, they're buddying up with uh, Russia. A lot of countries are. Uh, Turkey looks like they're, they're, they're heading... Uh, I, I, don't, I wouldn't say they're going to withdraw from NATO. They might uh, and, and join with Russia. I mean, Russia, they just came out with a huge... I, I know you don't follow the news, but they just came out with a huge speech, and they basically said, you know, globalists, we're here. And, uh, you know, we're not frightened, and we're defeating you. And so we'll see what happens. I mean, the Western nations are on the decline, and the, the, the Russia, China, India, you know, uh, Pakistan, that whole block of nations is on the rise and so we'll see what happens but anyway i guess that's it for the video so just kind of a life experience i mean new coffee maker um and uh well new air filter you know and then of course i uh, oh this was the last thing i wanted to put a life experience type of thing is um okay i'm just now you know i've been been basically taking all of the correspondence the mail the bills because uh, there's just thousands and thousands from my, my breaking my neck. And just sticking them in a folder. And so just now I'm getting started on all of that. And uh, and so that's what you got to do. I mean, it, some of it's ridiculous. Like one of them was a $35 bill at the uh, at University of Virginia. Well, you think, why not just pay it? Well, I called them up. I said, well, what does this mean? You know, and they go, well, we, we've got a lot of payments pending thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars from from Humana and 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 then Humana 
is pointing the finger at the VA because the VA is my primary care provider, but then the UVA never contacted the VA. They, they went through Humana for all my uh, medical costs. And of course, Humana is just Medicare, so you still got the 20% copay. So the, these are huge bills. Now the VA, you know, they'll, they'll help pay. You know, now is the VA the secondary uh, insurance provider or is Humana the secondary? And so now they're battling out saying, well, no, you're the primary. No, we're the primary. Two, two. <laughs> it's all government money. It's all your taxpayer money. I hate to say it. I'm sorry. I didn't, you know, I, I didn't plan on breaking my damn neck. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, who's going to pay? You know, and that's, that's where I'm at with all of that. But I it was all took a phone call on that one thirty five dollar bill, and the, I guess the moral of the story was, even at thirty five dollars, if you find out about it, don't let it linger, you know. Make sure that you know. And I asked the woman, and, and I always tell them, I say, would you make a notation on the file that I have contacted you about this bill, and uh, and that I am working on it, and that's very important, because otherwise they'll kick it into um, a collection agency, and uh, man. At that point, you're you're screwed. I mean, they, you know, they they are unscrupulous. Let's put it that way. They they the law means nothing to those people. They'll be after you, calling you, harassing you. You know, I although I'm in a gated community, but hell, I wouldn't I wouldn't expect them not to be knocking on the door for a thirty five dollar bill. <laughs> you know, what I mean, that's how crazy they are. All right, peace out, stay free. That's it for this video. Oh, we got to do the mantra. It's good, oh good to be in the free state of Florida. And if you're a Democrat, if you're a Democrat like my ex-wife is, uh, please, God, don't, don't stay in Florida. You know, go where you're welcome. I mean, Florida's mostly a Republican state now, and I think it's becoming more and more Republican. Even though we got people moving in by the droves from New York, oh my God, Connecticut. I've met people from Rhode Island, uh, Massachusetts. Uh, you name it. I mean, every every northern state is emptying their population into Florida. Uh, God, I, I hope they're not bringing their politics with them. But I mean, you know what? But if you if 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 you're gonna bring your politics with you, why did you leave where you came from, right? So get your ass out of Florida, man. Go to go to go to Illinois. Go to California. Go back to New York or Massachusetts or any of your Democrat states. Stay the hell out of Florida, man. We're a Republican state now. I think. Pretty firmly for now, and uh, I think Texas is pretty firmly uh, Republican, so that's two states. And uh, Tennessee, I don't see them changing. And well, well, let's look at <laughs> the beautiful <laughs> Wyoming. That idiot Cheney finally lost. Oh my god, the uh, the, the, the Cheney dynasty has come to an end, and uh, and people are saying now that the Clinton dynasty, the Bush dynasty. Who knows, you know, I, I'm, I don't put much credence in it all. I think they'll all manage to resurrect themselves in one way, shape, or fashion. And uh, don't forget my prediction. There won't be an election in November. <clears throat> uh, two million people in the country now illegally with drug cartels and crime going crazy. I just, there's going to be a big incident. And then the government's going to use that to declare martial law. That's my prediction. No way the Democrats give up power. All right, peace out. Stay free. <clears throat>